Hello everybody and welcome back. So we've already rendered out our first image which is fantastic but we didn't actually change any of the settings for that render. Perhaps you don't want a 16 by 9 render like we can see here which usually fills up a typical computer screen but you might want a square one for Instagram and you don't want to crop the image later you just want it straight away the right size. Well, we can do that with the output settings. So let's have a look at those now. Over on the right hand side in the properties window, the icon that looks kind of like a printer printing out a triangle and a circle there is the output properties tab. And this gives us the dimensions of our image and also the output itself as well. And there are several other options in here as well that we're not going to look at at this point in time. First of all, the resolution. This is always a contentious one. Often as a beginner, you want to render things out as high quality as possible. Maybe you want to render them out of 4K. I don't think that's a great way of approaching things because you're often rendering things out at a much higher resolution than perhaps even the platform you're sharing your work on even supports. If you upload to something on Twitter and Facebook and to a certain degree Instagram, uh, things can end up being crushed. The image can look far worse than it did on your computer. So rendering out for your desired platform is a great way of starting. So if I imagine my, my phone screen in front of me, I can hold it in front of the monitor and when we render something, it will come out full size. So if I press F12 right now, my phone is not that big. I'm on a 27 inch monitor. This is about one, two, three, about nine of my phones. So if I wanted to see this image full size without having to zoom in on my phone screen, we could actually lower the resolution and it would be absolutely fine. And in order to do that, we can lower the resolution down here. Let's set it to 50% and see what that looks like. Okay, let's make it full screen. We're at 100% zoom here. I don't want to zoom in or out because you can do that. And if you have zoomed in and out, that's okay. You can press the number pad one to make it full size again. That's still at least three of my screens. So you can see you can drop down the render resolution quite a lot if you're sharing something that's to be seen on mobile. Now this might be silly for an image that takes less than a second to render. What does it matter if I'm saving myself a bit of time? Well, if you're rendering out an animation, that can have a huge impact on the total time it takes to render that animation out. Animations can be multiple frames every second, 24, 25, 30, 60, 120 if you're doing some slow motion stuff. That is a lot of images to render out. So if we were going at 60 frames per second with an animation, the difference between half a second and a whole second for rendering something out is actually quite a substantial render time increase especially when it comes to an animation so we can control that let's close this window for the moment we can lower down the resolution percentage scale that's what i often do rather than changing these resolution x and y but if you needed something and it needed to be a square aspect ratio let's just set this back to 100 and say it needs to be 300 pixels by 300 pixels now the camera has seemingly zoomed out at this point in time as well just because we changed the aspect ratio but we can come in very quickly and reposition the camera and make sure that we've got everything that we need in shot and then we can render that out and we get a square aspect image if i press the one key on the numpad yes that's full size so that is probably a bit too small especially if you wanted any of the detail this is important detail being shown because we're having a look at this image and we're zooming in quite a bit, we cannot resolve the detail that the monkey once had. If we go in and turn up this to maybe 900 by 900 and render it out, it will take slightly longer to do, but there's definitely a higher fidelity image and we can look at that detail. Now this may be a rather moot point. Things that are often in the distance are also often slightly blurred out when it comes to rendering out images to give it that more artistic or photographic feel to it. So that is one of the things to bear in mind. There's no point in adding a load of detail that then you're simply blurring out afterward. And this is not just with rendering, that includes making the models in the first place. So we can play around with the resolution of our images. I'm going to set this back to 1920 by 1080, which is its default and in fact if you did want to set any field back to its default 
it looks like you can just clear what was there prior to that or we can go and right click on it and reset the default value that's another way of resetting any field in blender to what it was by default now we've got some animation settings and since we're not doing animation at the moment we'll leave those to when we do so the output area down here First of all, this directory here that we can output to, this is just as it says with the tooltip as we hover over it, name to save animations. We cannot put in a folder here for a default location to save an image. If you do want to do that, we can do that up under edit, preferences, and file paths. We can change where the render output is going. By default, it's just going into a temporary directory, which is cleared from time to time. But what we can do is change the file format. So instead of having to specify a, a PNG or a JPEG or something else every time, we can change it for this blend file alone. We can change it to JPEG. Then when we go ahead and press F12 to render, when we go image and save, it will already be set to JPEG and we can just type in what we need. And I'm gonna name this Mayan, but not Mayan, but Mayan one or something along those lines. One thing to watch out for when you're exporting. No, let's let's overwrite our original Mayan. I've got a copy of that anyway. But if, if we just have it set to Mayan and we click save as image, it just overwrites what's there. It doesn't give you any warning that something already existed. That's a quirk of Blender that can be quite dangerous. You can overwrite files without meaning to because it doesn't even give you any confirmation that you're about to do that, which can be a little bit dangerous, as I've said before. I've lost work with that, which is why I try and make sure I save things. I save them regularly and I keep backups. Okay, that's it when it comes to output settings. Remember to output for the platform you're sharing your work on and don't render at silly high resolutions just for the sake of it. Only render at super high resolutions if the project you're working on actually requires it. You're wasting your computer's energy and your time every time you're rendering at a higher resolution than you really need to. That's it for this lecture and I'll see you all in the next one.